Buenas! My name is Rebecca Lemos Otero and I am one of the founders of City Blossoms. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys an art project that I've been working on that I thought maybe you could also do at home. Um, when we were asked to stay in place, I found myself in Italy, a place that I'm not that um, used to. And I used this as an opportunity to take nature walks um, and kind of get to learn about the local bugs and insects and critters that I could find. Um, I was really inspired by them, took a lot of photos, but also thought it would be fun to do a project that we do at City Blossoms all the time, which is uh, inspired by Eric Carle and his books like The Hungry Butterfly. So today I'm gonna show you these collages that we've been making or that I've been making, I should say. Um, and it's just, you know, something kind of fun and goofy. Um, so you can take bugs like this guy, this little fun guy uh, who just stands alone. Uh, or as I got more into it, I got inspired to make some backgrounds and also the critters became inspirations for what became these monsters. Um, and you can see all the different color, all the different papers and colors. Here's another one with uh, word bubbles so I could have them saying some funny things. Um, and so I thought I would show you kind of how I've been doing this. The cool thing about it is that it doesn't need, uh, it doesn't require a lot of space and it doesn't require a lot of materials. So first you'd get some paper, that's some kind of nice thickish stock paper type of um, thing that can take some paint on it without curling up too much. Uh, whatever color, whatever paints you like, I prefer watercolors. Uh, they've been easy for me to travel with, but tempera would also work really well. Um, and both are very kid friendly. Uh, you can have an assortment of brushes. Uh, uh, for a while, I only had one brush, this little guy, and he is not only adorable, but uh, it also just worked really well for me. And then uh, sharp scissors, of course, and uh, some glue. Elmer's glue works great. Also rubber cement works really well for this too. So you do you grab all your materials and have them ready and then um, if you're going to do this project over a couple of days uh, or over an afternoon the first thing you want to do is prep your paper and so that for me was really fun has been really fun. I'll show you some and what you do just like Eric Carl in his is you layer so you can make all kinds of paper with all kinds of fun patterns on it. Don't know if you can see that one so much. Let's see, this is a nice crazy pattern right here. Um, and you don't have to worry about it, just, you know, pick whatever whatever you wanna do. Just like kind of, it's like a little bit of a meditation and painting. But what you wanna do is you wanna do a background color, maybe two or three background colors, and you just start layering up and then add little details as you go. So like this little guy started with like a light green that you can see in the background. And then I started doing these big green swaps, slaps, whatever you want to call them, um, and then yellow on top. And so that it created a kind of sense of depth, but also just the texture that you can play with later. And don't overthink it. Really just go crazy and do a bunch of different paper uh, colored papers. The more you want to do, the merrier. There's, you know, endless opportunities and possibilities. So once you do that, you draw out your insect, your bug, whatever you want to do, like a fast sketch to give you an idea of the shapes, and then you start putting it together. Okay, so we're going to pretend we have fast forwarded, and I have done my sketch and cut out all my little pieces. Um, I decided to make an ant, and so I've cut out all his little body parts. Here you go. And this is an ant I actually took a picture of a few weeks ago, and he stuck with me because he was uh, holding this really big dandelion poof. And I just thought I was so impressed by him. So here's his uh, body parts, his main body parts. I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down. And right now for this, I'm gonna do a little bit of messy gluing, but when you do it back at home, you wanna make sure that you've really gotten the glue all around the edges. And you wanna plan out a little bit of what you glue when so that you're doing it in layers uh, again so like you don't glue the you know you don't glue something too soon and then have to move it around so you want to plan it just a tad and then here's my other part uh, there you go and the paper will curl, curl up on you sometimes so you have to like hold it in place 
you know, do the old school counting to 10, which we won't do uh, right now, but there you go. And there's his body so far. Get some nice, uh, what's we call it, sound effects. Some glue sound effects. Okay, and there's his head. Um, I don't know why I said he, but now, oops, I made a little mistake there. Because this is watercolor, once I get glue on it, the color start, can start to smear. So I'm gonna cover those up. No worries. And then I'm gonna add some legs. Now you'll see my paper curling up. Uh, again, like I said, if you do yours, you know, taking a little bit more time to make sure that you can glue everything down is good. But since I'm showing you a little bit of a messy promo, or what a fun activity this is. I'm not gonna worry about it too, too much. What I do do actually though, once it's done um, and all that, I get some pans from my kitchen or from our kitchen here and I stack them on top of it to weigh it down so that everything gets really nice and flattened. So, and I try to be really careful with my glue so that I only use as much as I need. If you're doing this with a with a munchkin, you know, maybe putting a little tab of glue on the side that they can reach for instead of like pouring their own. Glue sticks will also work um, for the most part. So then here I have all my legs. And I like to make them anatomically correct-ish. Uh, so insects have six legs, so that's what this guy's got going for him. Go. Almost done. Now, the whole fun about making these insects for me is personifying them and making them into like a little story, right? They got something going on. So this guy, what he's got going on, ooh, let me not forget his antennas, is that he got this big, beautiful thing that he's holding on to, but it's a little overwhelming, so he's trying to figure out how to hold onto it. Kind of corny, but in a really cute, playful way. So, yeah, let's go with that. Look at his body. Look, you already got a nice shape going on. And see how I use different kinds of color papers? You can use totally different or use them kind of all in the same, um, uh, what is it, hue? Um, but that creates like kind of a fun dynamic, not to have it all be the same pattern. And then here, oops, hopefully I didn't shake the camera too much for you guys, is the fun, whimsical part for me, is this big, beautiful thing he found. I don't know where he was gonna take it, if he was gonna take it back. Uh, he's hot, not his hive. So there he is. And then what we're missing though is, you know how they say the eyes are the uh, doors to our soul? Well, definitely the facial, the eyes and the face and the, um, what is it? The eyes and the mouths and everything give your insects some fun character. So this guy I think is gonna be a little anxious about what he's, decided to to do and taking this big thing home so I'm giving him kind of a little bit of an anxious eyeball there we go and so in a few seconds you can see how he's come together and if you take your time you can really make quite the masterpiece and maybe uh, next time I will make him and he'll have like a big anthill behind him or something like that but either which way I hope you guys enjoyed this and that you are at home, oh no, at home having a good time, making some art and all that good stuff. So